dear students now we are speaking about uh, uh, the accounting related to the financial institutions and mainly we are to concentrate upon banks and um, uh, the part related to insurance or insurance companies of course the first look to these uh, companies we will find that we have to uh, make sure that we do understand uh, their own statements because this reflects the type of business so when we look to a bank balance sheet we will find uh, the same main uh, items related to any type of business which means we will find assets uh, as debit and liabilities and equity as credit and they are to resemble the sources of fund uh, related to the assets of the bank and the assets will be comprised of cash and deposits in other institutions which is called the primary reserve and securities for liquidity which is called secondary reserve and then uh, securities for investment which be the income source generating portion and then we have loans and leases and at the end we will find the fixed asset re uh, fixed assets related to the bank which is going to be called the miscellaneous assets and we have uh, on the other hand uh, the part of liabilities and equity deposits which means the uh, demand uh, or uh, now as we mentioned or money market savings and time uh, this uh, represents types of these deposits related to uh, customers of the bank and non-deposit borrowing which means the source not related to deposits and then we have equity capital from uh, shareholders which is related to the stock and the surplus and the retained earnings available uh, after this we must understand that the main uh, balance sheet stand the same for all types of business which means assets equals liabilities plus equity capital uh, and this is stand fixed as we uh, mentioned earlier um, uh, the balance sheet uh, or what we call the report of condition uh, in uh, the banking sector uh, we can see that uh, we can come up with these abbreviations uh, cash will be referred to as of C and cash will be uh, in the vault uh, uh, as of the uh, treasury level and then security holdings which means government and private interest bearing securities purchased in the open market which uh, we are going to refer to as of S and then uh, we have loans and lease uh, financings uh, made available to customers which we are going to refer to as L and then miscellaneous assets which is going to be referred to as of MA on the other hand we will find liabilities uh, including uh, these two parts mainly deposits we are going to uh, give it the abbreviation D and then the non-deposit borrowings uh, which is going to be NDB and then the equity capital which is we going to refer to as EC so the main equation will be referred to as of uh, C plus S plus L plus MA will equal D plus NDB plus EC as referred above uh, so uh, cash assets they are designed to meet the bank's needs for liquidity uh, in order to meet deposit withdrawals and customer demands uh, when we look to security holdings uh, this is a backup source uh, of liquidity and then when we are to speak about loans they are made pr principally to supply income to provide us with interest and then miscellaneous asset which means the uh, fixed assets related to uh, the uh, bank uh, and maybe there will be some investments in subsidiaries if uh, there is any available uh, when we look to the liabilities part we will find the uh, two main items related to that deposits and non-deposit borrowings deposits mainly related to uh, our main source of funding the bank which is related to our own customers and the non-deposit borrowings means uh, carried out mainly to uh, supplement deposits and provide the additional liquidity that cash assets and securities cannot provide 
Um, of course, when we look to the uh, equity capital, which means uh, supplies a long-term relatively stable base of uh, financial support upon which the financial firm will rely to grow and to cover uh, any extraordinary losses. And the equity uh, mainly will be related to stocks issued uh, to the market and maybe will be uh, traded into the securities exchanging market. Uh, then uh, we will find, uh, from another perspective, the accumulated uses of funds, which is going to be assets, will equal totally the accumulated sources of funds, which is going to be liabilities and equity. Uh, to uh, go through some items, we can see how to uh, calculate the ending allowance for loan losses. This means we have to go through three main steps. First step is to calculate the adjusted allowance for loan losses. And this will be equal uh, the beginning allowance plus uh, the provision related to the year. After calculating the adjusted allowance, we can go to uh, number two, which is uh, to calculate the net allowance for loan losses after all charge offs, which is going to be adjusted allowance that was calculated in number one above. And uh, then we are going to deduct from it the actual charge offs, uh, which means uh, the uh, charge off means uh, written off uh, from our own uh, loans. And then uh, the last step to calculate the ending allowance for loan losses will be a net allowance for loan losses after all charge offs, which is calculated in number two after the adjustments part. And then we are to add the recoveries from previous charge offs or written off, which means someone of our customers will uh, come back uh, and pay back his own uh, loans. Uh, so this means we have a customer that did get a loan and could not pay for a certain reason and then he's able to pay back our own money. So we uh, take it back as uh, a recovery uh, from uh, written or charged off. Now, uh, dear students, we are going through some applications to see how we're going to apply uh, the part related to calculating the uh, uh, allows. Uh, here you have uh, a balance sheet uh, given to you as a report of condition. And uh, suppose these uh, items are given to you to apply the example. Uh, so if we are to calculate it will be uh, as the next slide so it will be a direct straight application to calculate uh, the adjusted uh, allowance we will start with the beginning allowance for loan losses plus the this year provision uh, and as you uh, can see uh, this will be a 1 million and adding the 100 million it will be 101 million dollars and then to calculate the net allowance for loan losses after all charge offs, we will get the adjusted one that we did calculate from above. And then we are going to deduct the amount related to the charge offs, which is going to be half a million to reach one million and uh, sorry, 100 million and a half. And then to get to the ending allowance that will be uh, illustrated into our uh, balance sheet, this will be the net allowance calculated from the last step directly and then. Uh, to add the recovery from previous charge offs um, so we will find the it's going to be a 100 uh, half uh, million uh, plus the one and a half million so this will lead to uh, 100 million and two uh, this is the calculated loans losses allows and here you have another case uh, to apply yourself and then to find your answers and then correct them with the next coming slide. And then to go through uh, the uh, second part of our balance sheet, we will find that we are to speak about the first category, which is liabilities. 
and of course these liabilities will uh, be resembled totally or mainly by uh, the uh, deposits uh, provided by our uh, customers uh, and then some other items related to uh, other borrowed funds and uh, uh, trading liabilities and uh, uh, whatever agreements purchased or repurchased as of federal funds uh, of course after getting the total or the summation of these items we will find that we are heading at the end to total liabilities and then when we head to the third level of the financial statement as of the balance sheet we will find the, the second items as of a, a credit item which is going to be the total equity capital and this of course may be a common stock mainly and the preference stocks if there is any available and the surplus if available and the undivided profits of course uh, of course, when we are to uh, go to the second uh, statement, which is going to be uh, the uh, uh, report of income, or as we usually use uh, its title as of income statement, this will be comprising or comprised out of the main categories, revenues and expenses, as we know. Revenues means, in this case, interest income, mainly and non-interest income. And the non-interest income will be uh, uh, any fee income related from miscellaneous sources. For the expenses, interest paid on deposits and interest paid on the non-deposit borrowings. And then we have our own expenses such as salaries and wages and so on. And uh, traveling expense and uh, uh, any utilities and the provision for loan losses, of course, which is very important into the case of banks. And uh, then we have taxes paid, uh, and then we come to the net income available to the bank. Uh, in this uh, part, we are to uh, find the uh, two main items to come up with the income statement or report of income. Uh, well, the first one is a source of revenue and the second one is a source of expenses. Of course, when we come to the source of revenue, we will find mainly uh, that we have um, the cash assets available times the average yield on cash assets. And then we add to it the security investment times the average yield on security investment as each and everything is related to the average yield related to the, that type of item into uh, analyzing the business of banks uh, of course when we get to loans we will find that loans must be multiplied to the average yield on loans and so on miscellaneous and so on the income uh, from fees related to trading uh, whatever accounts and then when we head to the parts related to the expense items we find total deposits times the average interest cost on deposits and so to relate to each and whatever item we are going to multiply to the average uh, cost or the average yield of uh, revenue related to uh, the items that's not to be multiplied it's going to be salaries and the uh, overhead expense and the provision for uh, loan losses and the miscellaneous expenses and then taxes because it's not related to an average yield or to an average cost uh, as of a percentage and then uh, in the next coming uh, slides we are going to find problems and cases solve it uh, so uh, sir you can uh, try to provide your own solution and to make the comparison with the provided results if there is any problem you can try to find the cause and uh, make a correction to yourself so in the first case we will try to calculate the missing items which is expressed in red so of course if you are to apply directly the first one which is gross loans it's going to be net loans and the leases plus loan loss allowance it will lead to the 1900 and the bank premises and fixed assets which is going to be the only missing item into assets so we are we can calculate it by 
getting the total of assets is 2,500 uh, and uh, deduct all other given items of assets. This will lead to the only missing item, which is going to be calculated as 25. Of course, total liabilities and uh, equity capital is equal to total assets as uh, the main rule of the balance sheet or the main equation of accounting. This will lead to a 2,500. And then to calculate the total equity uh, capital, this means uh, total uh, preferred stock and uh, uh, common stock and the surplus and undivided profit. This will lead to uh, the 240. And for the total liabilities, it's going to be uh, total liabilities uh, and equity minus total uh, equity. This will lead to uh, a 2,260. For the total deposits, we can come, it, come with it from total liabilities less all other liabilities, uh, but the uh, total deposits. This will lead to $1,600. Dear students, you can try to solve this uh, case, uh, which is problem 5-2, and try to find uh, your answers and then uh, correct them by uh, matching them uh, to the given answers in the next slide. Thank you. Dear students, now we are heading to the second uh, level of the uh, financial perspective, which means we have to evaluate our own performance, actual performance done at the end of the year. And uh, this means we are to go to the uh, analysis or the financial statement analysis. And uh, when we look to that part, we seek to find ratios related to liquidity, related to profitability, related to debt analysis, related to turnover, and so on. Uh, so we are going to head for uh, first the credit risk analysis related to the bank and then the liquidity risk analysis. Uh, when we head to the credit risk, we will find these five, our main five uh, categories uh, related to our own analysis. The first those is to uh, non-performing loans uh, divided by total loans. And the second is the net charge offs divided by total loans. And then the third one is going to be the provision for loan losses divided by total loans. And then the allowance for loan losses divided by total loans, and then the uh, non-operating assets divided by uh, total, uh, by sorry, equity capital. Of course, you will find the first four. Uh, we have one thing to use as of to be uh, divided by, which is going to be total loans. Uh, the last one is the one to be different from this, which is related to equity capital. Uh, so uh, to uh, apply this, we are going to go for uh, the first example that we are going to provide in this case, which is going to be provided here. We have two years given for the ABC Bank as of a financial data. Uh, the first item is given total loans and uh, leases. A loan is uh, passed due for 50 days and loans passed due for 100 days. A loan passed due for more than 100 days and a loan charge off and then loans recovered during the year and then allowance for loan losses. If we need to apply our own uh, analysis, we will just apply the uh, last five uh, measures or equations applied in the uh, last slide, as we are going to do right now. When we are heading to the application, we will find that the number of formed loans means 100 days or more, uh, as we are provided here. This means they are late for the payment for about three months and more than three months. So we are going to get the number from loans, which is 0.5 and 1 divided by the 7.5 here to be at the 2%. And the second one in the second year is going to 2.8%. And we are to get to the net charge off, means the difference between the part charged off and the part recovered. So this is why 2 minus 0.8 and 0.15 minus 0.6. Uh, 
uh, and then this is applied directly uh, according to the given rule and now we are to apply the second uh, group of ratios which is called liquidity risk the first one is called purchased funds divided by total assets as of purchased funds including the euro dollars the federal fund the security uh, rps and the large cds and commercial papers and this part is going to be the second part into your balance sheet uh, uh, included within the group of assets uh, under cash and cash equivalent directly uh, into the bank's uh, balance sheet uh, then we head to number two which is net loans divided by total assets and this will be a direct application and cash and due uh, from balances held to other depository uh, institutions divided by total assets and this one is going to be direct application and that's the one that may need some um, searching for cash assets and government securities government securities means treasury bills mainly uh, divided by total assets so when we apply, we will find uh, that here we have uh, the treasury uh, bills available uh, for that part, which is going to be uh, the 100. And here we have the total investment securities. Uh, so we are going to use them, which is 1,070. So the application is going to be uh, right here. First, for the purchase funds divided by total assets, this is the 1,070 that we referred to before, divided by the assets was 2,000. And the net loans, which is directly applied, the 600 divided by the 2,000. And then the cash and uh, from balances held to other depository institutions, it's directly also provided 170 divided uh, uh, by the 2,000. When we head to the cash assets and the government securities, we'll find the 170 is the cash assets directly, but the 100 is the treasury bills provided to the uh, balance sheet uh, available to you, sir. And now heading to the one of the most important groups into analyzing any type of business, which is profitability ratios. We have here uh, the main important one, which is ROE return on equity capital which is net income divided by uh, the total equity capital and return on assets roa net income divided by total assets and uh, the uh, net interest margin which is very important into banking sector it's interest income minus interest expense this is uh, uh, we call it net interest divided by total assets to get to the uh, margin and then number four, it's the net non-interest margin, which means non-interest revenue minus non-interest expense divided by total assets. And the net operating margin, which means total operating revenue minus total operating expenses divided by uh, total assets. And one of the most important uh, ratio is going to be number six, which is EPS, which is net income divided by the common equity shares outstanding. Uh, here we have to go through uh, some cases to apply uh, the uh, past ratios. Uh, so we have example three provided to user. Suppose a bank reports that the net income for the current year is going to be 51 million and its assets total to be 1 uh, million 144 uh, and its liabilities amounted to, to 926 million dollars. Uh, what would be the return on equity? Uh, capital uh, and is the ROE you have calculated good or bad? What information do you need to answer the last question? Of course, to calculate the ROE, it's net income divided by total equity capital. Directly applied, it's going to be uh, 51 um, divided by. Of course, we don't know the equity, but we know the total assets and we know the total liabilities. So we can get to equity by getting the difference between them. So this will lead to, uh, at the end, 23.4%. Uh, Is this good or this bad? We must uh, compare it with uh, a criteria or a benchmark. And this should be provided before uh, making an answer to the second part of the question. Uh, go to another example uh, and sir, uh, try to apply it directly 
uh, and find uh, uh, if your answer is going to match the given answer here. And the same goes with example number five. Uh, when you are to calculate whatever required, then uh, make uh, your uh, answer checked by the given answers into this slides. And to complete, also apply to example six, sir, and try to find if your answers matches uh, the items from one uh, to five, ROE and ROA and net interest margin and net non-interest margin and then net operating margin. And the answers uh, are going to be provided here in this slide so you can sir match your answers. Thank you.